Welcome to the FCICA product webinar series. We are pleased to have Sean Leahy of Sika Corporation with us today. Sean, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you, Lizzie. How are you? I'm doing great, um, Sean. Keep on going. <laughs> I apologize for getting this late uh, late start here, but um, as is the case with um, with everything else, uh, we are all, always on tight schedules, and we're here today to talk about uh, the Sika Secure Rapid System. So what is the Sika Secure Rapid System? We'll get into it a little bit, but as we know, on most job site uh, situations, most job site schedules, uh, they have us going quicker than we normally like to do. So uh, it's sort of apropos that we're running a little bit late on this uh, webinar due to me, but we will get right into it. So, what is the Seeker Secure Rapid? Well, it handles two different issues that contractors typically run into on a job site. So, perfect case scenario, the general contractor is ready for his flooring. He calls you, the flooring contractor, to come on out uh, and get ready. You go out there two or three days before you're supposed to start. You look at the floor. You do some testing. It's nice and flat. The slab is nice and dry, and you're ready to go in two to three days, and the job goes off without a hitch. So we all know that's what we want in the perfect world, uh, but as we know, that's not always how it happens. So you get that same exact call. You go out there two or three days before you're due to be on the schedule, maybe even a week before you're due to be on the schedule. You throw down a tray max, or you put some, some RH meters, you find – you have very high moisture. You're 96, 95 percent moisture. You know that's not conducive to a positive installation with what you're putting down. You know you have a problem. Then you take your straight edge. You start walking around. You realize the floor is not flat and level. You're installing whatever it is, large format porcelain tile. You're installing hardwood. You're installing LVT with a very intricate pattern. What are you going to do now? You have an out-of-level floor that's high in moisture, and you have a GC who's climbing up your back telling you that he cannot lose days on his schedule. Go ahead, next, Lizzie. So, typical moisture mitigation and self-leveling time. So, you, get this, you run into this scenario, and you start looking in your bag of tricks with what you're going to do to help them out. Typically, what you'd go back to a general contractor is, okay, Mr. Supervisor, day one, I'm going to need to come in here. I'm going to have to bead blast your existing floor. i got to get some off, some of this old adhesive off. I have to open it up. I have to achieve a CSP or a concrete surface profile of three in order for my moisture mitigation system to be accepted. I'm going to come back the following day. I'm going to apply a two-part epoxy moisture vapor barrier. I'm not sure who is, whose it is, but... It's going to be someone's moisture vapor barrier that's going to take the high moisture content that you have in your slab, and I'm going to drive it down closer to the number, closer to zero, but it, within the number that I need to successfully install my finished flooring and maintain, maintain the war, warranty of the flooring manufacturer. So I'm going to come in on day two, and I'm going to apply that. I'm going to have a two-man, three-man crew here. I'm going to apply the moisture barrier, and that's going to take six to eight hours to cure, sometimes a little bit longer depending on what time of the year we're at. And I'm going to have to leave for the day at that point. I'm going to come back day three. I'm going to apply my primer as a bonding agent to the surface of that two-part epoxy. The reason I need to do that is I can't put down any kind of patch or self-leveler or skim coat to an epoxy coating. I need to prime it. So I'm going to apply that primer. That's going to take anywhere from one to three hours to dry, depending on which manufacturer I'm using. After that primer cures and dries for one to three hours, I can now safely apply my cementitious underlayment, whether it's a skim coat, a patch, or a self-leveler. I'll pour my self-leveler underlayment. I'll allow it to cure the appropriate time frame for my finished flooring. Depending on what I'm putting down, that can be anywhere from 12 to 16 hours, especially if it's moisture-sensitive product like um, uh, hardwood or engineered wood, um, cork underlayments, uh, anything that's highly moisture-sensitive. I might even have to wait as long as 24 hours. But either way, I'm going to be laying down my cementitious underlayment, and I'm going to leave for the day to allow that to cure. I'm then going to come back on day four, 
and I'm going to begin spreading my flooring adhesives and installing my finished goods. So on the right there, you have the unhappy job supervisor, right? I'm sure they're not around throwing wrenches, but they're probably sending nasty emails. They're calling you. This is unacceptable. I can't work this into my time schedule. Floor covering installers, we're in a pinch, right? Because we're always towards the end of a job. So you have all the guys before you that were able to take their time. They were able to solve problems. Uh, they were able to address needs on the job site. But the flooring guys, the painters, uh, the guys putting in final fixtures and furniture, we're sort of right at the end, and everything's up against the wall. And any time we introduce any kind of a problem, it's oftentimes met with hostility because these guys need to wrap up the job. They have an end user that needs to get into the building, a homeowner that needs to get into their house, whatever the situation is. And this increase in their schedule is just unacceptable and they need better options. Go ahead, Lizzie, next slide. So, Sika Secure Rapid is a five hour system. What this build up shows you is just some of the products that are involved to achieve that five hour system. We'll get into a little bit about each product. We'll get into a little bit about the timing that's involved with each product. Uh, we'll get into the application. And then we'll get into a little bit of the of the savings that's involved with this entire system. Next slide, Lizzie. So now you have your happy job supervisor, right? So you have the Sika Rapid Secure System. The time schedule for this system is a lot better. Day one, if the slab is porous, but you have old adhesive down, all you need to do is scrape, scarify, or grind off 50% of that existing adhesive. You do not need to bring in a bead blaster. You do not need to bring in an alternate power source if there isn't enough uh, juice in the building to support a bead blaster. Uh, you do not need to uh, um, get involved with the, shot, the, the, the cost of shot blasting, uh, potentially bringing in a second sub if it's not something that you as a flooring contractor can handle. Uh, you just need to get off 50% of the old adhesive and make sure the, the slab is open and porous. I'm not even worried about the CSP. I just need an open porous slab. So if I walk in and I, and I have that, then my day one, I can go right into applying my moisture mitigation. But I'm, I'm figuring worst case scenario here that I've walked into a concrete slab that has old adhesive on it. So I'm gonna take off 50% of that old adhesive. That's my day one. Day two, I'm gonna apply my moisture mitigation pro product, which is the Sika MB Redline. What's nice about this product is it cures in three hours as compared to the competitors that are six to eight hours. Once my red line cures, I'm going to apply the O2 Easy Primer. This is sort of the, the magic potion in the whole system. This is a primer that can dry in as little as 30 minutes, and I've seen it dry less uh, depending on what part of the country you're in, but I'm down in Texas right now, and I've seen this product dry in 15 minutes. Uh, but you apply that over top of the red line once it's cured, and it'll dry in 30 minutes as compared to one to three hours uh, with some of the competitive products. Once that primer is dry, now I'm able to go right into it with the cementitious product. In this scenario, we have the, the Sika Level 525 self-leveling underlayment. So in a lot of these moisture mitigation jobs, they're large square footage projects. Um, no one is running around, at least not often enough, I would see it in the volume of my sales, but no one's running around moisture mitigating 100 square feet or 200 square feet or one office in an office building. They're moisture mitigating large projects that have a, a, a new concrete poured slab that's emitting too much moisture. So if you're talking on these larger scale projects, more than likely when they go to reintroduce the cementitious underlayment into this system, they're gonna to wanna to self-level. They're not gonna to wanna to have a crew of guys on the floor skim coating. But if they did, you absolutely could. In fact, it would speed up this system a little bit because the skim coat will dry in about a half hour. But in a real world scenario, a large commercial project, you're up against it on time, you're gonna to wanna to go in there and self-level so that you can get this floor turned over as quickly as possible. And the Sika 525, will cure in 90 minutes and allow you to begin installing floor covering. So for an 8, 8 a.m. job start, that means flooring can be installed at 1 p.m. on your second day. 
So if it's one of those jobs that's up against the line and they're allowing people to come in and run two crews, you could install a significant amount of floor covering the second half of this day, depending on what areas are allowed, you're allowed to get into with your crews. Next slide, please, Lizzie. So now we'll get into a little bit about the products. Uh, we'll start with MB Redline. So MB Redline is a moisture barrier, a substrate consolidator, consolidator, and it does adhesion promotion. So we're talking specifically in this uh, scenario about moisture barriers. So you come into a job site, you have high moisture being emitted from the slab, this is your solution. However, I do want to touch on the fact that it is also a substrate consolidator. So if you go out to a job site and there's gypcrete that is chalky and soft that needs to be consolidated, one single coat of this will achieve that for you. Also, if you go out to a concrete slab where the concrete has been uh, over troweled, it's been it's been over finished to the to the point that all the water in the mix has come to the surface and it's created that very fragile, flaky surface to a concrete slab. One coat of the MB red line will also consolidate that type of a slab. So it's sort of like hitting the reset button on your substrate, depending on what issues you're dealing with out there. The third issue, of course, is you have old adhesive down. So how often do we go out to do a, a rehab or a refit for a project and we rip up some, some old glue down carpet, you get that musty smell, you realize we have a moisture issue here, but I have all this um, carpet adhesive on the ground. What am I going to do about that? I guess I have to bead blast it off. Well, with the secret products, you just have to remove 50% of that adhesive. So typically you can get that, depending on how uh, old the adhesive is or how re-emulsified it is, you can get that with a, with a uh, scraper and a, and a sander. Sometimes you need to bring in a grinder. But you do not need to bring in the bead blaster to get 50% of the adhesive off. So that's a huge cost savings on a project if you can avoid shot blasting. Some of the features of the products, obviously it's fast setting. That's why this product is in our Sika Secure Rapid. We do have another moisture mitigator called just Sika MB Primer. That's a more traditional two-part epoxy that has that six to eight uh, hour cure time that we talked about in the beginning of the webinar. This one does everything the MB does with a much faster cure time. It does it within three hours and you're ready to go over top of it. Has a very low permeability. When you talk about permeability for these moisture mitigation products, you're talking about a scale and they refer to that as perm ratings. And it starts at one and it goes to zero and you have all these products that fill in the middle of that one to zero. One being no protection, zero being complete protection. Well, one is no good. That means that's allowing all the moisture from the slab to push up through it. Zero means you're allowing no moisture to pass through it. And that's almost virtually impossible to obtain with a topical product. And usually it will adversely affect the cure of the slab if you allow none of the moisture to leave. So usually these products fall somewhere in between 1 and 0. If it's anywhere from 1 to 0.15, that's called a vapor retarder. That's where you get some of these high moisture technology adhesives that are out there that say they can handle up to 95% relative humidity or 96% relative humidity. Those are vapor retarders. Uh, also, some of the single component uh, products like MB Redline, um, some of these products that aren't two components where you can just pour it out and roll it on. Those are typically vapor retarders because they do not meet the 0.15 perm rating. Anything 0.15 down to zero, that's a vapor barrier. And these are the types of products that you really want to make sure you're using on a project if you have moisture concerns. This particular product, MB Redline, is at a 0 0.06 perm rating which is one of the highest, in, or I should say lowest, in the industry. It is a two-component product. So in the picture there, you see one bucket, but if you open up that lid, there's a sleeve, a plastic sleeve in there, a, a cradle that's holding a gallon uh, unit of the accelerant of the product. So what the installer will do is he'll open up the lid, he'll take out the, the sleeve with the gallon jug, he'll pour the B into the A, and he'll mix it for two minutes and then pour it out onto the floor. 
It's a solvent-free product with very low viscosity, and that's key to this product versus some of the other products that are out on the market. Because it has such a low viscosity, it's able to, to penetrate up to three-eighths of an inch down into the concrete surface. Because our product is able to penetrate three-eighths of an inch down into the concrete, that's why we're able to tell our installers, you only have to remove 50% of any old adhesive. Because we're going to penetrate all around where you have bare concrete, and then we're going to prime over where you still have old adhesive present. And our ability to penetrate all around the perimeter of the old adhesive allows us to encapsulate it so that even if for whatever reason that old adhesive were to lift, it's not going to damage um, or cause issues with your overall system. Obviously, you're going to use it under floors that require high moisture protection. So a lot of these sheet goods, LVT, VCT, you don't want high moisture because it interacts negatively with your, with your adhesives that are used to bond those products. Also, with sheet goods, especially heat weldable products, you're, you're basically encapsulating that entire floor. If you have moisture issues, you're going to get bubbles, you get problems at your seams, you're going to get the floor lifting off of the substrate because the moisture has nowhere to go. The last line there tells you the amount of moisture that it can handle. 6% on the Tramex and 25 pounds on calcium chloride and 100% relative humidity. So short of standing water or hydrostatic pressure, this is going to stop any moisture vapor from negatively affecting your install. Next slide, please, Lizzie. So this slide sort of shows that packaging I was talking about. You see he's popped the lid. Inside he has his gallon that he takes out and he pours into the larger bucket. It's about, uh, it's, it's a 2.64 gallon unit. Um, actually, I'm sorry, the red line is exactly a two gallon unit. You're going to get roughly 250 to 270 square feet out of a unit. And that's all dictated by the porosity of the slab. What I want you to focus on in the second picture where you see the gentleman mixing the B into the A, I want you to take a look at the substrate. This picture was taken at an actual job site where the installer ripped up uh, old VCT. Uh, there was black mastic underneath it, which he had tested. It was not asbestos, um, it was not asbestos cutback, but it was the old uh, Henry Black uh, cutback adhesive, but asbestos free. So he knew he had to remove the adhesive but when we told him he only had to remove 50% of it, that's the kind of floor that you're left with. So you can see small batches of adhesive. You can see staining on the concrete. We're okay with that. Our product will penetrate through, and it will seal that floor and prevent the moisture from negatively affecting the job. Next slide, please, Lizzie. Here you see a floor that's been treated with the red line. It is a two-part epoxy, so when it properly cures, you do get this mirror finish. If after you've applied the product and you do not see this mirror finish, maybe you see a dull finish or you can still see the surface texture of the concrete, it's probably a very, very high porous slab, and you might need to hit it with a second coat. But chances are one single coat is going to accomplish what you need, and that's the appearance you'll have when the red line is properly cured. Next slide, please. Now we're going to get into the O2Easy primer. This is a non-porous primer. So when you look at the Seco product line, we have two primers. We have the O1 Primer Plus and the O2Easy primer. The O1 Primer Plus is for porous substrates. So if you're going out and just doing a self-leveling job over concrete, you would use the O1 Primer Plus and use that to prime the slab. Anytime you're doing any kind of work over top of our MB or our MB red line or over top of any kind of non-porous substrate, ceramic tile, uh, port epoxy terrazzo, um, you want to, or metal, uh, we do a lot of work in MRI rooms, elevators, um, stairwells that are metal, you can prime with the O2 Easy primer. Uh, going over top of tight. VAT that's down. If you go into a job site and you lift up an old carpet and you realize that they've covered up 2,000 square feet of 9x9 nine nine VAT tile, you don't want to mess with that, obviously. You can prime right over top of it with the O2EZ, skin coat it, and then install whatever kind of floor covering you want to install over top of it. It is an acrylic primer. 
It is a single component, but within the within the gallon jug, there is sand that's suspended in the product. So when this product cures, you rub your hand over it, it feels almost like sandpaper because of that silica that is suspended within the product. The fast drying is what make is what separates this product from everything else out there in the competition. It's a 15 to 60 minute cure. I've never seen this product need 60 minutes to cure. Maybe on a very, very cold day um, in Chicago with the windows open, it might take 60 minutes. But a typical job site that has controlled HVAC, all the windows and doors are in, this product will, will be drying 30 minutes or less for sure. It has a high yield because you actually apply this with a paint roller, and you can spread this very thin. Uh, all we need is a covering of the non-porous substrate, in this case, the MB red line. So a lot of it goes a very long way. It comes in a gallon unit. You're able to pour a self-leveler over top of it, and there is no max depth. So there's a lot of products out there that you can go two inches with a single pour, three inches with a single pour, but they tell you that if you need to get to the upper end of your thickness of the SLU pour, they tell you that you need to do a sand broadcast into your moisture mitigation product. We do not require that. All you have to do is roll out this product, and then you can pour to whatever depth you need. Cost reduction per square foot is about 60% cost reduction because the price of this is extremely competitive out there in the market with products that are similar. It's a gallon jug. All you need to do is give it a little stir with a paint stirrer so that you, you um, resuspend some of that sand aggregate and roll it on with a paint roller. Next slide, please, Lizzie. So here you have someone just applying that uh, O2EZ. In fact, if you look at the second picture, if you look all the way to the back of that room, that's dried O2EZ back there. About halfway through is probably stuff that's been down for about 10 minutes, so you can see it's sort of partially dried. And then you can see where he's applying new product. Not a very difficult product to apply. Again, it's just a paint roller. You're just painting it on the floor. Same thing with the red line that's installed prior to this. You're just pouring it out on the floor, and you're literally painting the floor. Next slide, please, Lizzie. So the next product is the cement, the cementitious aspect of the system, the 525 Rapid. 525 Rapid is a fast setting self-leveler. It's for interior use only. Uh, it's very fluid. In other words, it's got, it's very easy to work with. Um, it's got a nice flow to it so that when the installer pours it out, it's going to start seeking its low levels. That's what you want your self-leveler to do, right? You don't want to have to touch it or work with it or shove it around a lot. You want it to be able to do the work for you, and that's what the 525 does. It's absolutely designed for thin applications. You can go um, up to a half inch with this all the way down to a feather edge. It can handle caster wheels, applications with heavy traffic. Uh, we have several projects going on with this in Walmarts, in grocery stores where they have carts. Um, sort of your, your worst case scenarios as far as traffic goes, we've, in, we've installed this product and it stands up um, fabulous. Forklift traffic, uh, the caster wheels obviously for these, um, these hospital beds, that's a huge, huge problem in the industry which we know about. This product will stand up to it even when it's poured to a feather edge. As I said, you can do a half inch in a single pour. You could add aggregate to this product if you wanted to. If you added aggregate, you could go up to an inch in a single pour. And you can install moisture-sensitive floor covering in 90 minutes. So that means if you have a hospital operating room that needs to be self-leveled and you put this down, you're literally spreading your adhesive or heat-weldable sheet vinyl in 90 minutes. That's not something that's out there in the industry right now on a self-leveling aspect. It's got very, very good coverage, 30 square feet per quarter inch. The one thing you should notice, especially if you're, if you're looking at competitive products, the Sika self-levelers come in 55-pound bags. The competitors are 50, so you're getting 5, you're getting 10% more per bag. So that needs to factor in as you're costing out your projects. 
It's mixed just like a traditional self-leveler. You can barrel mix it, um, pour into the wet edge, just like you would any normal self-leveler. Uh, the key to this is it is fast curing. So you do need to work with it pretty quick. You want to make sure you get it in place and get it um, situated so that you cannot be walking in it because it is going to start to cure very quickly. Next slide, please, Lily. Here you have it being installed, smoothed out. I have one installer that calls the 525 a stand-up skin coat. If he has a large project that's wide open, that he needs to skin coat because he's got BCT or LVT or sheet goods or something that he needs to make sure nothing telegraphs through. Instead of having two or three guys on their knees uh, skin coating the floor, <clears throat> having to come back, sand, scrape off edges, hit it with a second skin coat, he's coming in and he's just pouring his 525 knowing that he can be on top of it in 90 minutes with anything he has in the back of his truck as far as the finished flooring. Next slide, please, Lizzie. So some projects that this rapid system has been used on, uh, Walmarts, uh, T-Mobile, that's the, um, the cell phones in malls, Forest Hill Foods, grocery stores. Um, we, we do a lot of grocery store work with this product uh, because they can't be shut down, obviously. They're open every day. They have short windows to be able to do anything with their floor covering if they want to stay open. So in these grocery stores, they'll typically shut down one or two aisles when they close at night, whether it's 9 o'clock or 9.30. The crew will come in, they'll demo everything, and then we'll start to seek a secure rapid system with the MB Redline, the primer, the self-leveler, the 525. And five hours into it, they're ready for floor covering. And they can spread out their BCT adhesive and get it all laid and be ready to open up those those uh, one or two aisles at some point the following morning. So it's all about minimizing the downtime when you have these occupied spaces. So we talked earlier in the conversation about, you know, you have a, you have a job site, it's got a general contractor, maybe it's new construction, and all these pieces don't align and you need to speed things up on a schedule. That's scenario A. Scenario B, of course, is occupied space. Healthcare, education, retail, um, these t uh, airport type facilities, these places, they cannot stay shut down for two, three, four days to remedy their flooring issues so they can get a new floor put in place. Perfect example is that middle guy there, DeVita. On the West Coast right now, we're doing all the DeVita dialysis centers with this system because for them to shut down, the area of these DeVita dialysis where they actually treat patients, it runs them $100,000 to $125,000 a day if that's shut down in lost revenue. So they do not accept a four-day turnaround to take a floor that's high in moisture and isn't level for the LVT they want to put down. The four, four days does not work for them. Um, so they adopted this system, and we're doing that at, at all of their um, existing facilities as they're rehabbing them, as they're changing out flooring and doing redoing the painting, sort of giving their, their centers a refresh. And we've taken what is normally a, a three-day process and turned it into a three- or four-day process and turned it into a two-day process for them. Uh, and they've had ex uh, extreme success with it. Next slide, please, Lizzie. So here's just a few examples just to give you some real-world uh, idea of, of how this system is being used. Out in California, you see a Walmart here, BCT, 2,000 square feet. That is, uh, that was, I think, either two or three aisles of a Walmart. Um, again, you can see they just demo it. They put down the, the red line. They put down the O2Easy. They put, they put down the 525. They don't even bother uh, taking down the aisles or taking down the product in the aisles uh, because it's just going to happen so fast that doing all of that just adds time to the schedule. And if the installers are careful enough and they, they mix all their product to the outside of the aisles, you get no damage to their inventory. Next slide, please, Lizzie. T-Mobile, same thing. This is a mall application. So malls typically close at 9.30, 10 o'clock. They reopen at 10 a.m. the next morning. So you got about a 12-hour window to try and get all this done. 
This was 3,000 square feet where they put down new LVT. Again, they're not breaking down their kiosks. They're not taking product off the walls, posters. Um, they're not even unplugging their computers uh, because it's all a matter of speed and how quickly these contractors can get in and out. So you see that top right-hand corner, you see the red line's already installed. He's just applying his O2 Easy Primer. And then the bottom picture there, he's smoothing out his 525. And in 90 minutes, he's ready to put down LVT. Next slide, please. You need a dialysis again. Um, these guys cannot be shut down. Um, none of their fixtures are removed. They take the wall base off, and we start. They're putting down the uh, MB uh, the, the MB red line. They'll be right out to easy it. And then that bottom right picture, you see the 525 curing out. And that'll be ready in 90 minutes. These dialysis centers, typically they're 3,500 to 5,000 square feet a piece. Uh, and they're getting these they're getting these things prepped and done in a day. Next slide, please. Forest Hills Food. This was just a section in their frozen food section. Uh, they taped off some areas that they needed done. Again, it's all about time with these guys, how quickly you can turn over areas, how short you keep their downtime, because that's all dollars and cents to them. And if you have a job that needs to be moisture mitigated and self-leveled, you understand the pain of it on their end for the cost associated with the actual application of these products. But what we don't realize or what we can't um, appreciate on this side of the flooring installer is, what does that downtime mean to your customer, <clears throat> the end user in this, the hospital, the dialysis center, even the supermarket, having these areas shut down for two or three days what does that equate to in dollars and cents for them? So we need to come to them with the best approach possible to solve this issue. Is it going to be a little bit expensive? Yeah, because it's going to be a change order. It's going to be an addendum. It's going to be additional work. But I think what you'll find with this process is using a, using a rapid system like the Seca Secure Rapid, with the addition of the 525 and the red line, it does not add considerable amount to the square foot price of a typical moisture mitigation self-leveling um, addendum. So you're, you're, for a little bit more, you're giving them a lot because picking up two or three days on a schedule is, can be considerable dollars not only to the end user but also to the general contractor if they're up against their finish date and they're worried about liquidated damages because they're going to surpass their agreed-upon completion date. So these types of systems can really be a benefit to everyone involved in the in the in the project. Next slide please Lizzie. Fairway stores, this is a chain in the Midwest that we've done a couple of. Again, very similar to the one before. They shut down a couple aisles for us. The contractor goes in, does his demo, gets his red line down with minimal floor prep, O2 easy, five point five, ten thousand square feet. This one was in Perry. Next slide, please. So that basically explains what the um, the Seeker Secure Rapid system is. Uh, I guess, Lizzie, before I get into the last couple slides, are there any specific questions to the Seeker Secure Rapid system that I can answer? Uh, what kind of warranty do you offer with it? So. The warranty on the Seeker Secure Rapid is, is basically the same warranty that we would offer um, for any of our systems. Basically, what Seeker has done is if you use the Seeker system, they will actually mirror or absorb the warranty of the finished floor that's being installed. So what does that mean? Um, you know, let's say you're installing LVT in a hospital, and that LVT has a 15-year light commercial warranty or a 15-year heavy commercial warranty. If you use the SECA Secure Rapid system or any of the SECA systems that we talk about, we absorb and match that warranty. So you now will have a 15-year heavy commercial warranty on your installation system. What SECA is basically saying is that the finished floor covering will wear out before your installation system will fail you.
Any other questions about the, the rapid system? So, audience, if you'd like to type in any questions for Sean here, um, in the bottom left box on your screen, there's a Q&A tab. You can go ahead and type in whatever you'd like to ask and send that over to us. In the meantime, Sean, another question for you. Um, why is it better to use a two-part moisture mitigation rather than the single component? So that's a great question. Um, a couple reasons. Uh, number one, if you look at architecturally and um, what the industry has accepted as far as ANSI specifications, they still ask for and call out for an ANSI for a two-part epoxy system when they need to handle moisture mitigation. The reason for that is is a couple. Number one, it's a it's a sort of a tried and true method for mitigating moisture on a job. We understand how the product works, and we understand how to go over top of it and cover it so that any floor covering can be installed in conjunction with it. The other upside to the two-part system is that it will handle up to 100% relative humidity in a single coat. A lot of these single component products, number one, they don't typically penetrate down into the slab, and number two, they don't handle 100% relative humidity with a single coat, sometimes not even with two coats. So it's very hard to achieve that maximum level of 100% relative humidity with a single component product. So my response to that is always, you know, if you want to put insurance on a project and you want to make sure you're not going to get moisture, typically you want to have 100% insurance, not 95 or 96% insurance. So for just a, a couple pennies more a square foot, you can achieve that by using a two-part component versus a single part. And, and really the dry times, especially with the, the introduction of the red line, the dry times are almost identical. So there's, there's not much of a, um, a benefit to the single component other than saving the three minutes it takes to, to mix the, the A and the B together. Lizzie, if you go to that next slide, slide 27. So that slide gives you a full breadth of, of the product line. To pull out specifically what we talked about today, on the left you have MB Red Line, you have the O2 Easy Primer. In the middle there, at the end of the line there, you have the 525 Rapid, but we also have several other different um, self-levelers and skim coat and a full line of wood adhesives and an LVT adhesive to, to round out the system. So at this point, if there's are there any other questions SECA related that I can help? Even if it's not about the SECA Secure Rapid, any questions about levelers in general, moisture mitigation in general, or adhesives? I'm not sure. Okay, well, there's no other questions. Liz, is there any? Okay. So, of course, audience, if you do oh. have questions or um, you think of something later, uh, you can always reach out to Sean. Um, or you can send them over to me and I can pass them along um, so we can make sure that your questions do get answered. Um, Sean, thank you so much for presenting today's webinar sponsored by SECA Corporation. It was great having you on. Thanks for having me, Lizzie, and thank you everyone for, for hanging out there and waiting for me to get on. I apologize for my tardiness, but hopefully you found it uh, educational and useful. And yeah, like Lizzie said, if you have any questions at all, about the Seeker Secure Rapid, or any questions at all, please, about moisture mitigation, self-leveling, or wood bonding, even if it's not Seeker related, please use us as the vendors as a resource. I'm more than happy to help out with anything. Wonderful. And Sean will be at our uh, convention in March, if you'd like to start thinking about that, um, and he'll be representing Seeker <laughs> there, I'm sure. Um, Absolutely. So, Sims, if you're on the line, you can now navigate to the Submit Credit tab in the bottom left box, and uh, you might be asked to complete a feedback survey before you can receive credit. Um, note that you do have to be logged into the actual education platform for this feature to work. Um, so if all you did was enter your name um, to access the webinar, uh, that's not the same as signing in. So if you do have any questions about that, reach out to me. Um, please, I am here to help you get your credit. 
Everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. Have a fantastic rest of your day and a great weekend. Thanks, Lizzie.